And now let us hear from the psalmist, from Psalm 119, verses 105 through 122. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Loving God, you created life in us and all around us. Open us to receive your gifts of your world and your word, that we may be not just hearers of the word, but doers also. Gracious God, filled by your generosity to us, may we be generous to others. As we have been forgiven, may we also forgive. Accept from us the gifts of praise and worship as we commit our lives to you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. For the meditation today, I have what you may think of as a rather silly question, but just kind of roll with it with me. Are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the dark? Now, something you may not all know about me is that I am a bit of a practical joker. Keith and I of a, are of a kindred spirit. So if you know Keith's ability to have fun and sense of humor and joke, then that shouldn't surprise you too much. I am a bit of a practical joker. One time a friend of mine, now we were adults, okay, but a friend of mine went down to her basement to get something. I don't remember what she was getting. And I just could not resist the impulse. And as I heard her get down to the bottom of the stairs and I could hear her feet on the concrete floor and she was about halfway across her basement, I tiptoed over to the basement door at the top of the stairs and flipped the switch. I turned the lights off on her. She hollered a few choice words at me. And by the time she got back up the stairs, I knew I was in for it. Now, see, we were both adults, as I said, with young children, but dark basements are no place for anybody who watches too many scary movies, which happened to be my friend. Some adults are afraid of the dark. I remember being in a closet one time, and I thought, you know, what I want to get is just right, it's right up there. I don't need to turn the light on. And so I went in and I went to reach up and I heard the door close behind me. And all of a sudden, what little light there had been coming from the bedroom was gone, obliterated. It was completely and totally dark. Now I, I am not afraid of the dark, unlike my friend. I am not, but this kind of darkness is something different. It's a type of darkness that seemed to just close in on me. The more I tried to open my eyes and search and feel around, it seemed like the less that I could see. I don't know if you've ever had that experience of being in complete and utter darkness where you can't even see your hand in front of your face. But it's a type of darkness that is so oblique and heavy that it leaves us frozen in our tracks. And I think this is the kind of darkness, well, it's the kind of darkness I imagine 
when I read today's selection from the Psalms. It's a darkness that makes it absolutely impossible to tell where we have come from or where we are going. A darkness that actually seems to consume everything that is in it. If you can imagine that darkness, so total, so complete, and now imagine a light suddenly shining in that darkness. I think this is how the psalmist is describing God's word. A light shining on the path of our life's journey. A light giving direction, hope, and safety. A light that gives us joy. Experience teaches us that darkness touches our lives in many different ways. There is a darkness of the spirit as well as the body. Financial insecurity, having to leave our homes, increasingly losing our mobility. These can be like dark clouds that surround us and follow us wherever we go. Broken relationships, loneliness, anxiety can be like a sheet wrapping our hearts in darkness. And we may hear ourselves crying out with the psalmist, I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. We need God's light to shine into our lives. And here is the good news. It does. God's word, God's light can be found all around us. So often we think of God's word, God's light being the scripture, which it is, it is, don't get me wrong, but I think it's more than just the scripture. God's word can be seen and heard and even tasted in many different ways. I see it in the love of people wearing masks to protect one another. I hear it in the loving encouragement of the words of a friend. And I can taste it in the sweetness of a shared cup of coffee, especially if it's the last cup in the pot and someone gives that to me. That's so sweet. The psalmist prays that God will teach his ordinances to him. And he declares that he will not forget God's laws. This brings to my mind two specific verses. First being Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. And then also John chapter 13, verse 34. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. The light of God's word is the joy of our hearts because it is the law of love. It is the law of justice for all people. The light of God's word shines all around us, and believe it or not, even within us. The only real question is, where does the light of God's word shine in your life? Where do you see, hear, and taste God's word? Sounds like something really interesting to contemplate for this week. May God bless us all in our journeys. And don't be afraid of the dark, because God is there with you. I invite you to join with me in our prayer for healing. Creator God, you made this world. The mountains that rise, 
the oceans that carve depths, the winds and the waves. You made everything that lives and moves. In times of uncertainty, O oh God, we confess our fears. We confess our worries. We confess our frailty. We confess that our faith has been shaken. We call upon you, great creator, to work in us, to restore and renew our faith. Console us. Help us to deepen our trust in you by our faithfulness and love to each other. Remind us of the call to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to remember that all things change and season. And this is a long season, but it will pass. These difficult times will come to an end. For now, O Spirit of life, help us to breathe deeply into your love, into your peace, into your call for justice. May we know your presence is with us now and always. Amen. Amen, and God bless you.